a Kenyan governor in Kericho, the Kericho County governor, wants to get rid of machines and replace machines with human beings. Okay, the machines replaced the human beings and now he wants human beings to replace the machines. And all this is because he gave political promises to his constituents when he was campaigning and told them that these machines had gotten um, them out of work and the first thing or one of the things he was going to do when, when he gets to the office is to get rid of the machines. That is someone with good intention but with very little foresight. Yeah. As a company, and I know companies like Unilever have operations in Kericho. As a company, when I go to any country, any region, and we talk about um, Africans also being able to just go cross borders and do business with partners or people from other countries. When you as a business or when I as a business decide to go to a specific region and invest my money, are you trying to tell me that I don't have control over the business that I run? And more so if I've paid taxes and if I'm compliant on any on all the levels or all the county requirements that you have in place. Yes, we get it. You promised your people you're gonna empower them and make sure that they get their jobs back. But how practical is that? When, when you think of this kind of conversations, you start wondering if we send the right people in office. And this is not to be personal with anyone. I would say the same thing if the, <laughs> the governor was from Machakos, from Nairobi, from Busia, from Kisum. I would say the same thing. There's no way you can replace machines with human beings. Yes, it's physically possible, it's policy-wise possible, you can put in the laws, you can do all these things, but it's not practical. It's not, there's no company that is going to be willing to lower their production just because you gave a promise to your people. And I think this is a problem that comes with certain regions being known for specific things. Kericho is known for tea, and therefore... Any person that does not wish to go and pursue anything else has a default job, and that job is tea picking. And there are people who've grown up, never gone to school, never done anything else, never stepped out of Kericho County, who know nothing else besides tea picking. And I get it. There's a fear. There's a fear that comes with being... An individual in an area and the one thing that you know to do well is being taken away from you you feel like you're not gonna be able to provide for your family you're not gonna be able to provide for yourself you're not gonna be having any any way of having a sustainable income it's scary and the thing that we do is we do everything to fight it. We do everything to make sure that the status quo does not change. We do everything to make sure that even if that status quo does change, we try and go back to how we are used to doing things. And from all history that we have, we know that if there's one thing you can't do is to fight an idea whose time has come. We saw that with Kodak and their cameras, they refuse to innovate and become mirrorless cameras and whatever. They wanted to focus on film because they were a film company. And we see, we see what happened. The mobile phone basically replaced them. We've seen um, many other companies that have gone down the same route. We've seen um, Nokia. Nokia was the biggest uh, company or mobile phone company in on the continent if not globally but they refused to innovate and they had to go out of market so if you are constantly telling your people yes you are governor you're going to be on that seat for 10 years if after 10 years 
the person who comes into office is pro innovation and is pro development and is pro doing things in a way that promises or gives the investors maximum returns on the investments what will happen to this generation that will have come up in 10 years thinking that now their job is secure the thing that our leaders need to do is to come up with programs that can help upskill their constituents or people who they have authority over or people who are they are providing leadership for not fighting things and you can't fight innovation you can't lie to your people that whatever you're saying is sustainable if and even you as a governor you are in a very slippery position if your mcas just wake up tomorrow and decide you know what we like the machinery better you get impeached and you disappear so what happens to that group of people that you will have raised hope for it's it's impractical the best thing that leaders need to do is to look at okay we are in a space where innovation is inevitable and it's going to happen whether we like it or not but we also have this group of people who don't know anything else all they know is tea picking all they know is this this has sort of become their culture so how can we work with these investors in such a way that they can sort of absorb these people in other value in other areas of the value chain how can we partner with the institutions that offer um training there are so many institutions like synapses um there's so many institutions that can come in and say you know what we know this is all you know and this is what we think can be done to empower you more because even the guys who are picking tea with their hands they don't earn a lot of money and in this age of digital economy there are so many things that can be done by young people and even older people on the internet let's look at how we can upskill these communities that we are providing leadership for let's not lie to them for this short period that we are in office and make them think that now they are safe just because we got rid of three or four machines that were giving um 100 times <laughs> better output than you then yourself this is a very temporary fix and it i know it comes from a good place it comes from a place of i want to take care of my people and i heard him say that if the companies that are there don't want to adapt to what he's proposing which is having more people pick tea with their hands then it's very easy for him to announce a tender and get some other people to show up but the question is these people he said they can get more people to show up under their terms not like the government county government's terms and i'm just wondering which company is going to pitch for a tender that mitigates their output at the end of the day everyone is going to have their minimum requirements or minimum uh, irreducible agreements or propositions and in most cases it's going to be we need to get as much output as possible so instead of fighting innovation instead of fighting ideas whose time has come instead of trying to be people pleasers let's look at other practical solutions that can actually help our people because when we do that then it's very easy to promote entrepreneurship we can tell these people you know what there are all these other avenues that can help you make money and you don't necessarily have to be a tea picker for you to earn a living if we can do that then we are providing leadership that makes sense otherwise we are just being sensational about situation we are being emotional and in most cases those two things never give a long term um, viable result that can actually give value so let's have dialogue on things that can actually make sense and things that can help our people young people old people whoever like the workforce let's empower them with things that can actually get them to the next level as opposed to making them think that we can fight innovation innovation is going to be here it's coming and it's already here and fighting it is 
nonsensical for lack of a better way of putting it this is again not an attack on any individual person but if you're providing leadership for any group of people it's paramount that you let them know that these things are happening and they need to up their game they need to up their skills and they need to be innovative and adaptive to situations